Là, c'est bon. Let's go. Oh, this is my man, Chong Si. You know, we met like 10 years ago, maybe more. I don't remember, but he is the first one to really pay attention of give me a lot of respect of what I was doing, but I, I didn't know what I was doing. He can be uh, in the, you know, in this uh, game performance. He is for me, for sure, one of the pioneers of something like so crazy. That's a, a lot of discussion, misunderstanding, ignorance, and the fascia he is for me the OJ of that, one of the pioneers of that. And uh, he teach me what I, the why, the why about me. So I'm happy because uh, he, when I start uh, to try to understand why, he was the, the, the one who gave me the, those information about the, the fascia. And I'm happy because we have, uh, we have the Asdin with us. And Asdin is, uh, you know, also in the same zone, you know. Uh, about the fascia, you 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 can see uh, uh, his uh, lo the logo of Asdin is it's a fast yeah. structure. Yeah. So yeah. so let's try to to simply uh, explain, uh, my brother Chong. Thank you. Why, why you have a, such a good athleticism? Exactly. Above average, right? You you also have a brother. Yeah, Which my is, brother Nordin. It's, it's a very similar build, but he's nowhere near your level. No. Right. Right. So we started ten years ago, and uh, the, the research really started when we when we saw athletes that who are skinnier, just like you know Cardor's build. They're not much bigger in the in the gym. They're they're not building a lot of muscle mass, and yet they had no knee pain when they perform. Uh, you know, a lot of different sports activities and they had no knee pain they had they also produce much better sports performance so vertical jump single leg you know, especially for the sport of basketball so that's how we started in the beginning so we were trying to understand you know why is these people there might not be able to lift a lot of weights but still be able to generate a lot of force through movement. Mm. And that's when we first started to learn about fascia, the effect of how the fascia anatomy, you know, uh, co-contract everything through motion of movement. And my research direction was from the foot, because what I noticed over time is that the elite level athlete, the ones that are performing better, they had a different type of foot structure than average people, especially the ankle stiffness. So that's something that, you know, all sports performance uh, people talk about. However, you know, the, the real question is, can we, you know, produce this type of ankle stiffness such as what Cardua have? And also, you know, what does, it, what, does, what does this fascial structure do to the rest of the body? So that was one of the main questions we're trying to answer. So through you know ten years of trial and error and a lot of research with different collaborations with doctors, neurologists, we have the fascia researchers understanding the fascia anatomy. It came to us what is actually you know what the foot is doing to the rest of the body. Really, the foot is a neurological catalyst. So it really you know as you as you were growing, this is why when we first had our interview ten years ago, I asked you specifically about. What were you doing when you were a child? Because athleticism just does not come out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, what? which people think, oh, you know, this, he's a division one athlete, he's a professional. He just did a program, all of a sudden he's a professional. No. Professional usually, when they were younger, they were already building that foundation, the internal foundation of the fascial matrix and fascial connections. So what we, what we realized over time is that you know, if you're barefooted, you're, you're concentrating, you're, your foot is constantly under tension, if you're, if you're hitting the ground, the ground's rough, right, because of your upbringing. You did a lot of activity and you're landing, you're jumping, you're pivoting. Just like the Brazilian natural footballers, they're playing on concrete, right? A lot of them are very athletic, they don't have to do a lot of SNC work, strength conditioning work, and they're naturally very gifted. Well, because the fascia, the fascia integration from your foot. And we, there's a specific mechanism that we uncover, which we call the hyperarchic mechanism, which then builds from the foot all the connections to the glutes. So you can increase this 
this this connection. So when we do fascial dissection, for example, at Stanford in Denver, what we what we try to identify and also uh, confirm by research, uh, Doctor. Uh, Stackle's research in 2023 is that your your gluteal region, this large region area, anatomically you have 80% of the fascia lata, which is tremendous, you know, tremendous. And we, if we just cut the dissect the body and just pull the fascia from the glutes, we can we can move the entire leg. Yeah, we don't we don't really necessarily need. But anything else so so the fascia also from another researcher dr robert schleit he discovered that the fascia is not just a passive tissue which many people think it is you know because if you think of um, uh, if it's a passive tissue then there's no point on working on it because it's in it's inert it doesn't do anything the fascia is also in charge of wound healing how if fascia is just a passive tissue let's say you get cut you, or you have a sprain, the, the, the site does not even heal properly because the, the fascia has specific cells called the myofibroblasts. So these cells will help you contract. And however, these cells can also help you to strengthen because by stimulating your foot, the plantar fascia, right? On the bottom, it's all about plantar fascia. You're also creating more myofibroblast cells. So this is why it's so important to understand why you know we're built this way why we should be barefoot more often than not now you know the there's one one nfl athlete mac hollings he all the time he's if he it's not necessary he does not wear the shoe he just barefoot you look at seven years of his his sports history no injury this year's the risk of injury for him from the statistic is 11 percent it's very low very, very low, very durable. But you look at the other players at his position, wide receiver position, they're all injured. Yeah. Usually one side or the other side start with the ankle, foot, and then the knee. Because there is a holistic effect, right? So the message that we, you know, we're trying to bring out with, you know, Cardo Ziani, with your, is to, to make people understand the importance of uh, developing barefoot strength. Yeah. And, and it's not just a, you know, segmented strength in the foot. It's really a holistic through the fascial network, right? So this is, this is what we trying to help people understand and try to help people get better. Now, a lot of, uh, um, a lot of uh, for example, uh, sports medicine currently, even I have friends who are in PT schools, they do not learn enough about the fashion. You know, maybe like one chapter, one paragraph, <laughs> that's enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. You, you've been yeah, through that. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, you know, I, I used to dissect also during my studies, and uh, we knew that there was something special. I, I finished like uh, 15 years ago, 16 years ago, and we knew that there was something really special about fascias because it's not like you, uh, you remove the skin, there's something translucid, and we put it this on the side and then go to the muscle. No, no, no. Everything is connected and adaptating with uh, your way of life. So if you're doing nothing, nothing will happen. If you uh, put some constraints on it, uh, if you used to work on the tissues and everything, your fascia will adapt and hold everything in um, balanced, in the good way. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so we can talk about a little bit about your foot because a lot of people don't understand how important the foot is. You know, it's really flexible. Yeah. So, so there is a spectrum of the range of the tissue stiffness and function of the foot. And and one of the things that we look for, for example, is the the anterior tibial tendon, which is this tendon in the front, right? This tendon, this large tendon in the front. So if you just do this, and you see you see his foot, right? As very beautifully build art very nice art here right but the most important thing is if you let dorsiflex a little bit right it is that this tendon is extremely durable it's extremely important and this attaches to the center of the art yeah now if you if you look at average people carefully examine their foot their anterior tibial tendon does not go to this direction 